much is going to come out of this. Sea deck are just going to take the tower, and evil geniuses will treat this as time to be able to farm and maybe a little bit of split push. AUI does pick up his level 6 finally at the bottom lane. He's got a lot of mines around the map, by the way. Yeah, he does. And uh, the Bloodseeker does opt to go for the Hanamitis. And I don't know how many mines that is. Is there a way to check? Uh, well, Techies, you can click on him. And he oh, he's going to get him! Is. Picks up one. Shiki, that's a big kill. Bloodseeker goes down. That was four different mines. He was he had 13 at one point. So All right, so much for the comeback. <laughs> That's a free snipe for AUI, and it's a huge one because the Bloodseeker was starting to snowball a little bit. Like he was catching up in levels and farm, and you don't want him to be able to just do that for free, like I said. And EG's lineup just can't really pressure on the map very well. Mm -hmm. like you have the Clinks and the Lina, but both heroes can get traded out oh, They so have the easily. right idea. They've been searching for this Techies, and they will be able to actually get the kill. Fisher goes out before the Suicide Can from AUI. Nicely played. Fear immediately trying to cut the Creep Wave in the middle lane in order to allow his allies to take... That middle tower at least put some pressure on it. Fear starts backing up. He forced a couple rotations. Universe, meanwhile, doing something similar up there in the top lane. I mean, that one pickoff, CDEX still have a great opportunity because they, they they have Aegis. They can go ahead, grab a gem, five mana to, you know, the tier one towers that are left, maybe even get a tier two here. I just don't see anything stopping them from doing it right now. You know, what? why why is that middle tier one tower up if you can afford sentries or a gem and just take it it's really actually just good play by eg what they're doing right now is they're splitting the map up as much as possible mm -hmm. and forcing uh c deck to react to their play like look at fear yeah nice he pick actually up. isn't accomplishing a ton he's just annoying them mm -hmm. and so they overreact towards it so universe gets to push out top they send aui bottom and it's just c deck playing reactionary dota because what if you know there are 10 mines that you don't spot half your team dies and then C deck, eg runs you down then suddenly you're in a position where you lose all map control against a hero like Techies. So you can't really take these chances and not have them pay off. And that allows EG to open up the map. And it is risky by EG, but it's the right play to make. Like, get around the map, split up, look for individual pickoffs, just try to slow down C-Deck's timing. C-Deck have an Aegis, and they're probably still not going to be able to utilize it as much as they'd want. Mm -hmm. Like, out of this Aegis, they were probably looking to take two Tier 1 towers, bare minimum. But with the way the game's going, they're just so afraid... And I think they're just playing a little bit too reactionary right now yeah. to what EG's doing. And Do you think uh, he's going for top? Yeah, XZ was already brought low by the landmines earlier. The ice shards misses, but the snowball, or maybe just the right clicks, will not. Now, Universe is in a bad position. He will be caught by the call down Fisher combo. He goes down as well, but they got to pick off on the darks here. I think EG are happy with one for one trades um, that are, you know, even offlaner for offlaner situation like that, just because it stalls up the game some more. In fact, that middle tower goes down in the process as well. Q actually positions himself in an awkward area, but Samael's not going to be able to uh, capitalize on that one. We've got a gem now for Q, so hopefully they'll be able to, you know, actually take some control of this game away from the techies. But I was going to say, it, it may also go back to C Dex. Um, more passive play and overreactionary may come down to the Bloodseeker's choice in items. I asked you about the Midas, and you said, no way, that's just going to be a bit too passive. Shiki still went for it, and I think we are seeing the effects of that now. I mean, going for the Midas here, when you assume your team is doing really well, is okay. I changed my mind, Cap. I okay. get to do that. All right, very well. So he decided to go for it, and that was just because of the landscape of the game. Like They were able to get the Roshan for free. Nobody really contested him. His team was doing good 4v5, but... They're just stalling out a little bit longer than I think they want to, and it's allowing EG to open up the map a little bit more. Uh, and they weren't able, C-Deck actually weren't able to use utilize that Aegis whatsoever. Like, they yeah. didn't use it to get the bottom tier 2, they didn't get either of the tier 1s out. They had taken that tier 1 really early, and so this Roshan was probably just an objective they thought was really safe. There's no way that you can have mines there. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just more EG playing a little bit of mind games, but... Sea Deck are still in a really good position. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're, first of all, there's a couple things to kind of contradict what I was talking about. We, we have watched many teams before in this group stage where we're like, okay, there is some pressure. They should start being aggressive, et cetera, et cetera. But they've played very patiently and just waited for their opening. And that seems to be a game winner. Like, you don't want to try just because you, you maybe want to be able to utilize that Aegis and five mana take towers doesn't necessarily mean you should if you can't find the correct opening. Um, but also another thing is that CDEC do not have bad late game by any means, right? EG, they're left with, you know, uh, Tusk, which is a little bit questionable. Um, Lena's obviously good, but, you know, is is Klink's really going to be able to outcarry heroes like Bloodseeker and Gyrocopter?
No, but that's why Fear is building towards the mid game right now. He's getting yeah. a Deso soon. Uh, I mean, the great thing about Klinx's item build is it allows you to both pick off heroes with the Medallion of Courage, which I think is why he just still decided to go for it. It's just mm -hmm. a good item. Like, it gives you good... Uh, it gives you some mana regen. The armor is really good, and the Valor ability is fantastic. And so it allows you to look for solo pickoffs using that. And the Deso allows you to both pick people off for cheap, and it allows you to split push towers, which I think are both necessary for winning this game if you're EG. Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the critical reasons. I mean, we talked about how this meta... Like, you and I had a conversation very early on to the patch where it was like, okay, this is this seems to be, like, very team fight, like the intelligence... Intelligence heroes in general got buffs. We're going to see more intelligence cores come forward, which are more about team fights and uh, maybe some push. That means there's going to be a natural reaction to split push, right? Like, there's going to be, if you don't want to fight, you want to try and split push. It seems like Desolator being such a cheap item, um, as well as being able to offer you that, is a, a prime reason why Clinks and Templar Assassin are seeing a decent amount of play. And the deck smoked up, and they're running in, and they've got a gem, so they're feeling pretty confident. And meeting with the Fisher, Echo Sam actually go. still controlling Samael a little bit. They've managed to get a rupture on him. Samael's just going to make the straight TP out. Universe, he actually managed to save his ally. Now, Universe is going to give up his own life for that, but it's still a big win. That was a five man gank, and only got the offlaner there, saving the much more critical Lena in order to pick up her blink dagger. And all the attention down at the bottom half of the map means that Fear is now able to take that tier two. It's denied by Aggressive, but it's still map control. Control take. Yeah, now you've got a Deso on Fear who, and his team's done a really good job of splitting up the map. For he's level 13 on the map right now. Uh, when it comes to net worth, he's just behind the Gyrocopter ahead of the Bloodseeker and the Darkseer, and he's going to start to snowball. As this build is so cost efficient, Austin, mm -hmm. it just allows you to get ahead, and split pushing is so easy in C deck. When you're playing against the Tusk techies, it changes things. Like it. Yeah. Messes with your brain. You think to yourself, we have to five man, we have to stick together, we have to go and walk around with our gem because what happens if AUI had smoked up and you know decided to place twenty mines in our jungle? We don't know these <laughs> yeah. things and so it messes with your head and in this Universe. mid lane. Yeah, he's trying to go on aggressive, but at the same time Fierce come in from behind. He's gonna be forced back with that blood right. PPD is in an awkward position. He should be going down here. Shallow Grave will save him for the meantime. They want to go farther up. Some mail actually came in and tried to go for Shiki. But it looks like because of that, they started to go up for him and didn't manage to get PPD, at least not yet anyway. They already have the missile coming out with the vacuum, bringing him over the Fissure for the kill. Aggressive gets it with the flat cannon. Now that tier one glyphed up, Cedic will be able to take it. The rest of Evil Genius is quick to just try and split push as much as possible. And uh, AUI has actually boosted straight for an Aghanim Scepter. So this obviously could be a huge factor. This means it's going to be very hard to push uphill to start with if CDEC ever find that opportunity, but you just never know if AUI is going to be able to single-handedly win a team fight at this point. Samael's going to come in. He will scepter onto the gyrocopter. He does not have the BKB, but the Light Strike Array missed. And that means AUI didn't get the opportunity to lay down the mine where he won, and now the call down's going to hit him, so he just suicides up. He realized he's 100% dead, so... Missed opportunity there for Evil Geniuses. But they're still forcing very defensive rotations out from CDAC constantly. Yeah, if you notice, they're so afraid. They're just walking as four constantly. They're just thinking to themselves, okay, what if there is somebody down here? What if there are more mines? And I mean, every single person can relate. This is like the one time where you could really reference playing pubs, mm -hmm. where you just have been conditioned in this patch to respect <laughs> techies. Uh, you walk up a hill, you're, you're dead, and then you're just like, why? Why did I do that? I knew this was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And you just don't want to live in that type of regret. And... C-Deck just continues to play reactionary Dota, but I think with this BKB on aggressive and the next Roshan, this is when they make their move. Yeah. They are behind the net worth, but this is where I think they're going to say, we should even things up. We've got a Blink Dagger, a level 11, we've got a gem. There's not a whole lot more that we can ask for. You could get another BKB on Shiki. I think that's probably what you wait for. Mm -hmm. And that's the timing, is that you've got to hit timings in Dota. You can't simply just say make arbitrary moves and be like, let's push bottom. Mm -hmm. like, you got to have item timings. Like Once you get a BKB, what are you really going to get that's going to change anything? You're not going to farm for another 2,000 gold without applying pressure. So I think the smarter thing right now it to, for C-Deck to do is split up the lanes, push them back, make sure you're not getting split pushed. Oh, Echo Slam gets laid out. Garter showcases that Blink Dagger. PPD is still going to be caught by the call down. They're going to turn around and try and complete Garter's kill, and they will get it. But Samael has to commit suicide there, and they got PPD there with the tail end of the vacuum. From XC, nicely played from C deck. Two for one exchange, of course, one of them being a suicide, but it's still lost bloodstone charges for the Lena. 
And seeing that timing, I was going to bring up the same exact thing. C deck, they're about to pick up double BKB, despite the fact that they're a little bit behind in net worth and experience. They can definitely, you know, change everything here by utilizing those BKBs to win some fights and take some towers. EG, though, what's the correct response to that? Split up you don't want to fight, right? You do not want to fight into those BKBs. You just try play like very aggressively, like Samel just did, and go for a pickoff on somebody. Force defensive reactions from C-Deck. If you can make trade offs or even just get free kills, it delays C-Deck's push. Yeah, exactly. Delay, delay, delay. That's the name of the game for EG. Even if EG have worse late game, they have much better pickoff potential, and their heroes are just irritating to play against. Like mm -hmm. C-Deck don't have the best pickoff potential because their Bloodseeker is so underfarmed. Like, if this was a level 15 Bloodseeker with SNY BKB, then maybe, but they're actually going to get another kill here at top, and that's a big one under the Gyrocopter. Is this just further delays the timing, and they the might get Universe. Time. Yeah, Universe is going to be caught here, and Chan Totem slows him down. They will pop him. Nice and quick. Still, though, the Gyrocopter kill, much more valuable for Evil Geniuses. It just delays the timing even more. I know we've yeah. said that a hundred times, and people must be irritated by now, but... This is what C deck don't want to happen because they've got a BKB on both their cores. They have dire side advantage. They've got a medallion, so Roshan is free. But EG, if you even slow that timing down by four or five minutes, you're going to start to snowball on items. As we see, Sumail has a dominant lead in net worth. The Klinx's items right now are particularly strong. At oh, hey, why? Can he get the suicide off in time? Nope. Not quite. Still, though, Fear's going to come in from the side. Uphill advantage. Doesn't really matter too much. He's still just doing so much. XZ drops quite low. Samael actually blinks for it. Going for more here. She can actually force to pop the BKB. XZ, the last right click. No. Still 70 HP. But that cheap damage from Fear. Oh, he actually ran out of his death pact. I think that was the last bit of damage he really needed. I actually thought he was going to get him because the weave was on the tail end. Yeah. He, he had uh, both. I think he also had the medallion on him as well. Yeah, now EG actually have control of this Roche area. Fear's got a Deso and a Medallion of Courage. This is going to allow them to do it so quickly. C-Deck don't have their Earthshaker, but I still think you have to take this fight. You've got your BKB up on your Gyrocopter, but it's going down so quickly. I don't need, actually know if they have time to respond to this. Oh, nope, with the Blink in, they definitely can. They already get a two-man Blink. Universe popping that Snowball in order to dodge some of the damage, but he's still going to go down here, slowed down by the Shell Grave. Fear turns and fights aggressive as best as possible, but maybe realizing this is a bad idea, he'll still get the kill, but he's stunned up by the homing missile and will be taken out by Shiki, it seems, as the return. Oh, is he going to get away? No, Shiki, he just needs the extra bit of movement speed. He'll catch up with Fear eventually, it looks like. Smail? Oh my goodness, he actually yules, but the Vistage finds him in the end. Shiki goes down to some mail, though, with the Laguna Blade. Strikes him out nice and quick. Final down. PPD needs some help. Fisher gets laid out onto him. He will be chain stun out of this one. And in the end, they managed to stop the Roshan. C deck are probably going to be happy that they at least keep that intact, but they lost their two very important cores. Yes, they got three kills for it, but Jarcopter and Bloodseeker down. It makes it, um, I would feel like, a rather even fight just because the, the cores maybe didn't get as much from C deck. It will be advantage C deck, though, because they're going to get the Aegis out of this. Mm -hmm. This is the benefit of being on the dire side. Uh, Fear they actually might be able to fight it because Fear is going to be up in just 24 seconds. Uh, C-Dex cores are going to be up a little bit sooner than that, but this next Roshan fight is going to determine so much. EG don't want to give this up, and I think they can defend it, and C-Dex doesn't do too much damage. Like, their physical cores, their Bloodseeker doesn't do any damage in these fights. Like, he's got a BKB, but that's about it. Yeah. Even his armor isn't too great, so Fear is able to fight him down 1v1 pretty easily. The Black King Bar does nothing for Fear. Like, he doesn't really care that uh, the Bloodseeker has one. And he's got a BKB of his own now, and so it's going to be really easy for EG to engage this.